I'm here in Pioneer Town, California with my good friend Marco from Overland X and we're going to take the Jeep Wrangler 392s out of this desert and head for the hills where it's a whole lot cooler and go find some epic campsites and do a little cooking and just hang out and relax. But before we do that, we're going to go check out Pioneer Town and go grab some lunch. Stay tuned. Our adventure begins in Pioneer Town, California, which is about 30 miles north of Palm Springs. Pioneer Town was developed in 1946 as an old western Hollywood set to attract visitors. Marco and I had hoped to shoot some video in the town to show you some of its uniqueness, but they required a permit, and after 30 minutes of asking half a dozen folks that worked there where we could get one with no luck, we decided to go grab some lunch at the iconic Pappy and Harriet's. This is a rustic restaurant with great service, a fun atmosphere, and excellent food. Marco had a burger, and I had a blackened catfish sandwich, which we both devoured. We took some time to review our route for the day and take a close look at some potential camping sites. If you make it out this way, both Marco and I highly recommend stopping here for a cold beverage or a bite to eat. After our delicious lunch, we made our way about five miles northwest to the small town of Rimrock, where we passed by several desert homes and ranches on our way to the start of the Burns Canyon Road. It is so good to be out here again with Marco. We haven't had the Jeep Wrangler 392s together on the same trip yet. So this is the first time and the rumble of the V8s just adds a little bit of excitement to this trip. Now, we just had lunch in Pioneer Town and let me tell you, that catfish sandwich was one of the best ones I've had in a very long time. It was so good. And uh, what a great place to stop. If you get a chance, go check out Pioneer Town. Now we just hit the trail here on Burns Canyon and we are at about 4,500 feet elevation, which is actually some pretty high desert, but we're gonna be working our way all the way up the mountain where the temperature is gonna drop a lot. We're expected to be pretty cold tonight, but we should be up in the forest and get to enjoy some nice cool weather and just camp and relax and Marco's gonna cook up dinner. I've got breakfast duty. We're just gonna hang out and uh, spend a little bit of time with you. It's gonna be a good weekend, guys. Burns Canyon is just under 20 miles of trail that works its way up from the California desert into the eastern portion of the San Bernardino National Forest. This trail is mostly easy with a few moderate rocky and rutted sections that a 4x4 with high clearance should be able to easily navigate. I've traveled this trail more times than I can count over the years and it's not only a great scenic trail, but it's a great way to access a major network of trails with levels of difficulty from easy to extremely challenging. It is also a much more enjoyable way to get to Big Bear Lake versus traveling up the one laid road on the west side that can be very congested on the weekends. We encountered a few other off-roaders up here on a Saturday, but they were far and few between. There are also many dispersed camping sites available as you travel up the mountain and venture off on some of the side trails. Keep your eyes open and be willing to do a little exploring and you will be rewarded with an amazing secluded spot. We will only be on Burns Canyon for about half of the way today because our plan is to do just that very thing. Venture off and look for new trails and campsites we haven't yet explored. The 392 is just, it's just an awesome vehicle. It's got all the power, the suspension is great. I, I really like the suspension. Now that I drove uh, Brad's 392, definitely uh, re-gearing and 37s. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that to, to my 392. But the 392 is, I think what's a Jeep is all about, you know, the, the V8 engine with the, all that power. It's just, it's just a, it makes it a perfect Jeep. It's so capable and so quick. I was talking to Brad about it. It's, they're not really fast vehicles because they can be fast. They're Jeeps, right? But they're quick. They're super quick. I, I love the 392. And this so far is my favorite. What I like about Burns Canyon is it's not just a flat, easy dirt road. There's some good ruts, some climbs, some winding through the mountains. It's definitely a pretty engaging trail. I mean, you can do it in a standard four-wheel drive vehicle, but it is fun to drive. 
And I gotta say, I am loving this 392, guys. You know, I've owned several Jeeps over the last few years, and this is hands down my favorite. I've been getting a lot of questions about how much I like this versus the diesel and the 4xe, and honestly, there's no comparison. I love the 392. Man, it just drives so good. I never want for power. I don't know how long this thing's gonna be around, but I'm glad I have one because this is gonna be in my driveway for a long, long time. And I know Marco is, he's smiling just as much as I am driving one of these. So a lot of great Jeeps out there, guys. The 392 is a blast. I've been coming up here to the Burns Canyon Trail for years. And I'll let you in a little secret. It's one of my favorite ways to get to Big Bear. It's not the fastest way, but you're not spending all this time on the freeway and on a weekend on that windy road that gets extremely congested. You can come back here, have a nice dirt road, and sure, it'll take you a little bit longer. It doesn't take you that much longer though. And have a beautiful drive through here. And what I love is you start out in this low-lying desert with all those yucca trees and then as you start to climb in elevation, because we've already climbed just about 2,000 feet, you start to get this blend between the yucca trees and the pine trees. And it's really unique. And eventually, we're going to leave all those yucca trees behind and we'll just be up in the pine trees. I just, I just love this trail. you got to come up here, guys. We've still got a few more miles of trails to explore before we make it to camp. But first, we decided to stop and take a break and enjoy where we were at. Look close at your surroundings when you are up here and you'll see some of nature's beauty hidden just behind a rock or a tree. We also took some time to leave it better than we found it. Marco, what are you doing? Seven nails. I I'm beginning to think you like hunting nails. Dude, I, I can start construction already with every, <laughs> every nail that I found in this trail. Oh, guys. Look at that. Quit bringing prowlets and nails out here. Look, we swapped keys yep. on the way here because you're thinking about re-gearing your Jeep. Uh, so I want to know, comparison, I'll give you my opinion, what did you think about driving mine versus yours? Okay, my Jeep is on 35s with 373 gear. Yeah. Yours is 37s, 456. Correct. Right? I want 456. Yeah. It makes a big difference and you can tell. Yeah. I mean, acceleration is, is there. Well, I got to say, uh, your Jeep still felt very powerful. But what I liked, and, and you know, I've been doing this for a long time, when you put a lot of weight in the vehicle and then you put a rooftop tent and a rack up there, sometimes it feels a little like a Cadillac. Dude, you've got that suspension dial that felt really good. Yeah. 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 Except for the steering. I'm having issues with the steering. I drove your Jeep and it feels super solid. Yeah. Mine is gets a little nervous. Yeah, I, I did notice why. a little play in there, but yeah. we'll have to sort that out. Yep. But, uh, just take a little break, guys, and uh, we're going to go uh, find a good camp spot. But we're in no rush. It's still early afternoon, yeah. so. Yeah. we got some cooking to do, but oh. it'll be quick. What are we having? Oh, it's a surprise. Oh, I can't wait. I love his surprises. All right, so we've reached just over about 64, 6,500 feet in elevation. So we've climbed quite a bit. It's dropped 72 degrees outside, it's beautiful outside. But now we are gonna take some side trails and look for some new campsites. We have camped at a lot of spots out here. In fact, we're passing one that I've camped at before. But we wanna go find a spot where we haven't camped. So we're gonna go explore a little bit. Just take a left and a right and see where some of these trails lead. I've got a couple waypoints that I've kind of marked, but we will just see where we end up. The goal is to get somewhere that's kind of epic, but uh, give us a little bit of protection from the wind. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of exploring over the next uh, probably half hour, hour or so.
Well, this trail is turning out to be a lot more fun than expected. So we've been climbing up this mountain. It's gotten very rocky, just having a blast, but we just pulled over the side to let some adventure bikes pass us. But we noticed, check that out in the distance, guys. That looks like the start of a pretty big fire out there. So we'll be keeping our eye on that. Let's hope that that doesn't turn into a problem tonight. Thankfully, the forest firefighters and air tankers had it extinguished pretty quickly. So nothing for us to worry about. All right guys, here is the verdict. So we came to the end of this trail and it is a beautiful, beautiful spot up here. We've got all this protection from the wind. We've got some trees and plenty of room for Marco and I. Now there are some guys over here on this other side and they're actually uh, fans of the channel. We've known a couple of them. And so they uh, said, no problem. You guys are welcome to camp out here with us. And they told us at about 11 o'clock tonight, the Milky Way will be right here. So it's gonna be a beautiful night. Well, it was a little after five o'clock and we have camp all set up. I'm sleeping in the shift pot over there and uh, I will be making breakfast over there in the morning. We'll talk more about that tomorrow over coffee. Marco's all set up in his rooftop tent and dude, you are way off the ground up there, way off the ground. And he's already got the scottle and his table set out so I know he's gonna be working on dinner. We've got the propane fire pit with this nice little barrier that's gonna keep the heat in. No campfires allowed up here, but we're still gonna stay warm. It's supposed to be in the high 30s. And I think we're just gonna chill and relax for a little while. Any hints for what's for dinner, buddy? It's tuna. Oh. But, uh, no, I'm making a surprise. Tuna is always good with me, man. I cannot wait. But I think we're just gonna hang out, guys, and just chill for a bit. And it's tacos. Oh, yeah. It was very nice getting to camp with time to just sit back and relax. Plus, we had the opportunity to chat with the other guys just across the way at the other campsite. A solid bunch of guys with the same passion for the outdoors and adventure spirit as Marco and I. Well, we have been hanging out for about the last hour and a half. And actually, we're invited to go over to the other camp over the way. And uh, super nice guys, huh, Marco? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those uh, guys are great. We, we have, you know what? We, I was thinking about it. We. We have an awesome community. Yeah, hundred percent. Because I've seen these guys before, and, and and I feel like I've known them forever. Yeah, you know, great guys. Cool. Yeah, just welcome us over camp, and they're welcome to come hang out over here as yes. well anytime. But uh, it's getting chilly. We've uh, I've got the long johns on. Marco's got the jacket and the beanie, and uh, and then he's gonna start working his magic. We're gonna have dinner. What you got there, buddy? 
I made this salsa. Okay. And it's chile de arbol. See? Sesame seeds and peanuts in oh, oil. Interesting. What do you got there? Look at this ripe pineapple. Dude, look how yellow that thing is. Smell it. Oh, dude. that's gonna be so juicy. So, yeah. This is price for tonight's dinner. Uh-huh. We're gonna have tuna in adobo with pineapple tacos. Oh my gosh. That sounds amazing, buddy. It'll be good, man. It'll be good. So Marco, tell me about this tuna, buddy. Okay, this is this is ahi tuna. So this has been marinating in adobo. It's got three different chiles. This is like carne adobada, like tacos de carne adobada, but this is tuna adobada. Antro, avocado, and salsa. You gotta be careful with this salsa though. I love tuna, you know that. And pineapple is one of my favorite foods, and tacos is a favorite food. This is gonna be good. It smells so good, guys. There's a lot of flavor going on there. That is really, really good, dude. That adobo, that peanut salsa, what do you call that salsa? It's just peanut, peanut thing. Oh, I wouldn't have thought, but that's really good. And then the pineapple and the avocado, and there's a little kick in it. Oh my gosh. Dude, this might be my new favorite taco you've ever made. This is so good. Seriously, where did you come up with all those flavors? The chiles. <clears throat> the dried chiles has got four different chiles. But like peanut, I would have never thought peanut. I admittedly had four of those amazing tacos and we still had a ton of food left over. So Marco invited the guys across the way to join us. It was the perfect way to end an excellent day of adventure. Hanging out, good food, good camaraderie, a great location. What else could you ask for?
Well, good morning, everybody. It is just a little after seven, and Marco and I were both up bright and early this morning, and we've already had some coffee, and it has been very, very windy last night. It's calmed down a little bit this morning. The sun's coming up, it's starting to warm up, but the wind is still blowing. And uh, I'm gonna whip up some blueberry pancakes, and then Marco and I are gonna pack up and go do a little bit of exploring. This has been an amazing campsite. The wind has been a little bit of a bummer, but uh, we're, we're persevering. campsite was perfect. It had everything you could want for in a campsite. It had scenery, it had protection, it had level ground. We could probably fit another vehicle where we were at. Plus there were those guys that were super nice that were way on the other side and you could bring more folks there. An awesome campsite. Now we're going to continue exploring this mountain and try to reach the very top and we're still going to be marking some potential camping sites along the way but it figures that as soon as we leave camp the wind is done. There is zero wind outside and it is about 65 degrees. It's gonna be the perfect day out here.
When we reached the top of this mountain, just over 7,500 feet in elevation, we could see for many, many miles in every direction. Johnson Valley was off to our right, and Big Bear Lake was off to our left. Absolutely worth the drive up. I hope you have enjoyed hanging out with us for this adventure. Be sure to visit Marco's YouTube channel over at Overland X and stop by trailrecon.com to check out all the gear we have to help you on your next adventure. Thanks for watching.